All right, a couple things we want to talk about first in putting. I'm going to run through this stuff pretty quick. We've got some putters out here, some golf balls in the buckets. If you want to try some of the things I'm talking about, feel free. First thing we have to understand when we're putting, it's a little different than our full shots. This right here, where this is pointed, ultimate control over where the golf ball is going to go on the greens. Path only accounts for less than 20% of ball direction. So for the, you guys that are standing there watching, if I'm rolling it down that way, as long as the face is pointed there, it doesn't matter where the putter moves, the ball's going to go where the face is pointed when I hit it. Okay? So, once we understand that, once we give up control of this perfectly straight path and we start trying to control the face a little better, there are some things that we ask all of our students to do. When I teach putting, I teach it in three phases. The first thing you have to do is decide where to hit it, so we're green reading. The second thing you have to do is set up to hit it where you decided to hit it. And then the third thing you have to do is start it there. You have to actually give it a chance. In theory, the best way to make a five foot putt is to fly it in the hole because it never has to touch the green that way. But reality says that we're going to have to roll it on the ground because if we miss that fly in shot, we're not going to have it very close coming back. So when I talk about part three, which is starting it where you want to start it, that's all your job is on the greens. If I roll this golf ball down the greens, Woodwind here is known for having some of the best greens in the area. And if you guys watch the ball real closely, that ball's hopping the whole time it's rolling. It doesn't stay on the ground very well. You don't have any control after it leaves the blade. So we're going to do these three parts. This whole green, if I roll golf balls from this whole green, anywhere on this green, if it had enough speed, all the golf balls would end up right down there. That's the low point of the green. Most people will look to the low point of the green when they start their green reading process. That is just a general indicator in what's going on. If you look, the yellow golf balls are all in a little different spot relative to this down here. It's where the straight uphill putt is to whatever the hole, wherever the hole's cut at. The pink golf ball then is a straight downhill putt. Once you identify where the straight uphill putt is in your green reading, then you know what every putt around that hole is going to do. All of these putts are going to do what? From this ball all the way around to this ball. What are these all going to do? Break to the right. They're going to start left, break right. The closer I get to this line right here, this is the line that identifies where uphill putts change to downhill putts. These are our max breaking putts, the two white golf balls. Very straight, left to right. Big breaking left to right. Very straight, left to right. As soon as I go from right there to right here, they go now from left to right to right to left. That's where they switch over. Very straight right to lefters. Big breaking right to lefters. And again, very straight right to lefters. If we have any time at all, I'd really encourage you guys Grab a putter, roll a couple golf balls here, because this is an eye-opening experience if you haven't gone through this for green reading. You'll completely look at the greens differently when you're out there on the golf course. Because we can do parts two and three perfect. We can set up to hit it where we want it, and we can hit it where we want it. And if we didn't choose the right spot, we're still not going to make it. Okay? Green reading, very important. Part two then, once I decide where I'm going to hit it, then I've got to put myself in a position to hit it there. Going back to what we first talked about, this is the main influence. We do this little drill here with the string so that when I set the putter down behind the golf ball, I can see that the string's going to cut my putter at a 90 degree angle. I know I'm square at that point. A lot of players will use the string drill to try to get their eyes over the golf ball. I was lucky enough to work for a man by the name of Bruce Rerick who gathered data on almost all the professional players on the tours for a five-year stretch. And he found that two-thirds of the players actually aim best with their eyes inside the ball, not directly over the ball. If there's one thing in golf that's an absolute, it's not every method works for every player. Okay, everybody has their own thing. Everybody's eyes work different, everybody's built differently. When we do putter fitting, which we do, I can take any one of you guys and take any one of those putters over there and I can put the ball in a spot in your stance where you'll aim it perfect. And if I change putters, it won't be in the same spot in your stance. Then once you hit a putt, we've got to decide if that model works to your stroke type. But as far as from an aiming standpoint, we can get any one of you to aim it perfect with any putter on the market. So when you're going to get fit for a putter, I always tell people, 
They call me, they say, we want to do a putter fit. What should I do? I said, go to Golfsmith, try every putter out there, come in with a list of four or five that you like. And then we'll go through and we'll test those and see what you aim best, see what fits your stroke type. There's a lot of, I had a question earlier from Doc about the, uh, or from the, the camera guy here, about the uh, belly putter. We go back to this, again, controlling this putter face. There's two ways that I lose control of this when I hit a putt. The first way is, is my thumbs will rotate like this and I'll open and close the face. If you lose control of the putter face that way, a belly putter will not help you at all. The second way to open and close the face is if I start in this position and I come back with the shaft ahead or I come back with the shaft behind. If you do that, and we can tell you if you do that in one film stroke, you're absolutely kidding yourself if you don't use a belly putter. It is like cheating for those players, and it's why I think at some point they'll make it illegal. But if that's how you lose control of the putter face, you absolutely can eliminate that flaw from your stroke. All right? Part one, green reading. Part two here. We're gonna have to ask everybody to turn around and look up here for part three. Hove, you wanna hit these down these rulers? <laughs> All right, part three is getting it started online. You notice that this one here, I, I don't have any of these set up at a hole. And I don't allow any of my players to do this drill at a hole. Because again, I don't want the hole to dictate if we did it right or not. I want the drill to tell us if we did it right or not. For our beginning players, we ask them to put the ball here behind the sticks, and we start with the sticks as wide as they need. Then what's going to happen is, is we get it here, we set the putter down, we aim the way we want to. As long as I keep that putter face back to where I started, the ball rolls down and doesn't hit the sticks. If I hit this and the ball hits the orange stick, I open the face, either by twisting the hands or changing the shaft angle. If I hit the yellow stick, I closed it. These can get closer and closer and closer together. For our more advanced players, we ask them to putt balls off a ruler. All right, and what happens when we putt it off the ruler, it's much more dramatic. So that one, obviously, the face was open a little bit. That was better, okay? The cool thing about the ruler is, I've selected this ruler for my students. It's $1.98 at Lowe's, it's a three foot metal ruler. At six feet, you will completely miss the hole if the ball doesn't roll down the ruler. That's the way the angles work. So it's a great way if you wanna make those six footers. Tour players are making all of those five, six footers and in. They roll it down that ruler every time. But there's a reason that they go from making 90, 9% of the five footers dock, most of them, three to five feet, somewhere in there. I think the leader on tour was 99 point something. He missed five out of 500 last year on tour. There was a magazine article about it. Once they go from five feet to 10 feet, it drops to about 50%. They didn't get worse. The ball starts bouncing on the greens, starts to get out of their control. Okay, so the three parts to this, decide where I wanna hit it, set up to hit it there, and hit it there whether it's sticks, rulers, strings, whatever you have to do, okay? Doc, how many minutes we got? We got five minutes, a couple minutes? Three. Three minutes. <laughs> Guys, grab a putter if you want, grab some golf balls, start rolling a couple putts around these holes. If we don't want to do that, I'll field a couple questions if anybody has one. Yes, sir? Any suggestions on how to get your speed right? Speed right. Speed is a very, that's a great question. Speed is totally about timing. What we do, for players is we teach them either to use a metronome or we teach them to count 1001 and strike the putt on one. The one thing that's really cool about the tour players that were studied, and again this information comes from my previous boss, they take the same amount of time to hit a three footer that they do a 30 footer in every putt in between. So what happens is if I'm taking one second to hit it, 1001, if I'm going to hit a short one it's 1001, if I'm going to hit a long one 1,001. So I move the putter faster for longer putts and slower for shorter putts but over the same amount of time. Back in the math days, distance equals rate times time. If I leave one of those constant all the time, I can be pretty good at judging the other one. Okay, so we really practice that. It gives the appearance when I move really slow for a second that I'm not moving it very far, which I'm not. But it's not that I'm trying to make a short jabby stroke, I'm taking a short really slow stroke a longer, faster stroke. 
but they both last the same amount of time. So we'll ask our students to either use a metronome or count when they do that. Good question. Yeah, bet metronome, you can go 65, 66 beats, something like that. So you, you'll, most of you can download them on, on uh, there's apps for the phones, free metronomes. You can put it in, you can put the earplugs in, or you can come out here and turn up the phone and bug everybody. Either way, <laughs> that works too. Any other questions? So if I get this wrong, I'm going to blame the Crown Royal. Okay. Uphill is right to left and downhill left to right? No. <laughs> if I'm, if I'm, turn around and look at that hole behind you, okay? Anything on your side of the two colored golf balls, left to right. Anything on the other side of the two colored golf balls, right to left. Any other questions? Okay, you guys thought it was all simple. Anyway, thank you, Brad. Appreciate it. How about a round of applause yeah. for Brad? Yeah.